Hi friend, welcome back to my kitchen. We are making hand pies today or pop tarts, however you wanna call them. I typically call them hand pies, but it's basically just a homemade pop tart. Or I guess a homemade pop tart is technically a hand pie. So we're gonna make it all from scratch today. And the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm actually gonna come over to the stove. Hi friend, welcome back to my kitchen. That's my own phone. We <laughs> we're gonna go Oops. ahead. <laughs> we're gonna go ahead and <laughs> uh, call them. I uh, okay, we, we muted that. Well, now you know how much of a delay there is. <laughs> <laughs> so we're gonna come over to the stove. This is the last of the apples that I harvested from our orchard last fall. And I thought that this would be a good way to use some of them up. So I have on the stove just a little bit of butter. We're gonna start on the stove and I'm gonna show you how to make these hand pies using fresh fruit. Or if you don't want to go through the effort of peeling and slicing the apples, how you can make them with a skipped step. So these are peeled apples. So if you have fresh apples, just peel them and slice them thinly. And we're gonna put them in a pan with a few tablespoons of butter. Cueing the second camera angle, <laughs> as promised. Hopefully you can now see me putting the apples into the pan. I'm gonna go ahead and cook all of them. We might not use all of them today, but I will find yummy uses for the filling if I don't end up going through all of them. So we're starting with this because this is going to take the longest to cook down so that we can go to other steps while this is cooking. So to this, I'm going to add some cinnamon. I've got some brown sugar. I'm just going to put a little bit because I'm going to add some apple butter to this, which has sweetness. And then my favorite ingredient that's, That's fresh, fresh nutmeg. nutmeg. So, so we're gonna go, go ahead, ahead and get, get a good amount of fresh, fresh nutmeg in here. We don't, we don't want the whole thing in there. there. I don't want that to be too loud for People you. People are saying there's an echo now, so. Oh. Don't know. Oh. Is there still an echo? We had a, a second mic going. Oh, okay. sorry. <laughs> All right, so now we're good. We should be good. So today, Josh is here, and go ahead and ask your questions as we go. He's going to be gathering questions throughout. There's going to be a few spots throughout this live where we're going to have like a little downtime with the cooking because we're going to be waiting for different things to happen. So Josh is going to just be gathering questions. So that'll be awesome. So now this is cooking. I'm just going to give it a little bit of a stir. I'm going to add one more ingredient. Whoop. And that's a little fresh lemon juice. And then we're just gonna let that sit and cook for a little bit and then we'll come back to it. So while this is cooking, we're gonna head over to the food processor and we're gonna make the pie crust. Now, if you don't wanna make your own pie crust, you can just go get some store-bought pie crust. But I'm gonna show you how easy it is to make pie crust at home, especially if you have a food processor. It's pretty simple ingredients. The first thing I'm gonna do is make a mess. <laughs> and then I'm going to fluff my flour and I'm gonna, I'll link my pie crust recipe. I'm just using my pie crust recipe, but you could use whatever your favorite pie crust recipe is. I'm gonna get two and a half cups of all purpose flour in there. And then here I've got my butter. And this is very cold butter. It's not frozen. I have found that it is hard to work with frozen butter unless you're gonna grate it with a grater. Are these like hand pies? Hand pies, yeah. Are there other names for them as well? Pop-tarts, turnovers, I think is another name for them. Um, but basically we're making an apple pie that you can pick up with your hand and eat with your hand. And we're gonna make a strawberry flavored one too, or an apple pop-tart or a strawberry pop-tart. I guess the apple one with the apples isn't necessarily super traditional, like Pop-Tart, but it's basically a pie you're gonna eat with your hand, as long as, as, long as they seal properly, <laughs> to be determined, I guess, on that. So I did not need to chop this this well, but I went ahead and did, because I was talking. But all you need to do is chop your butter, but before we put our butter into our flour, we're gonna get just a couple more ingredients in here. I'm gonna add a tablespoon of sugar, and that's mostly to help with browning because sugar helps things brown in the oven. Now we're gonna add salt. And then I'm gonna go ahead and put my lid on. 
If we want to turn the volume down. Okay. Perfect. I'm just going to whip it up just to mix it. All we did was mix it. Okay, perfect. Josh is giving me the thumbs up that I have volume again. Now we're going to add our butter to our mixer. You can do this with a pastry knife too, or you can get in there with your hands and you can break the butter up with your hands, or you could use a box grater and grade your butter and mix it in that way. But I'm gonna use my food processor today. And now we can turn the volume down because I'm gonna go ahead and blend this until we have just a little bit smaller than pea size. I like it to be a little bit smaller than pea size, but I do like there to be some big chunks because when we add the water, we're gonna blend it again. So you wanna make sure your butter is a little bit on the bigger side before you start adding your butter or your water. Okay. So I'm gonna take a look at that. Let me see if I can get up close and show you this butter. I'm gonna come around. So we have some pretty big chunks still, some like pea size and some smaller chunks. So I think I'm just gonna pulse it maybe one or two more times. I think that's what we're gonna call good right there. Now what I'm gonna do is measure out my water. I have ice water here because when you're making pastry, you want your butter to be as cold as possible because butter is not just fat, it's butter and there is water in there. So when you put your pastry in the oven, you want that super, super cold so that the, when the butter, when the water in the butter hits the hot oven, it actually steams really quickly and that's what gives you the layers and the puff. But if your butter melts, then the butter kind of melts out of the crust when you put it in the oven. So that's why it's good to work with as cold of ingredients as possible. Actually. Okay, so there's my half cup. My lines on this cup are kind of faded, so I need to use my other half cup measure so that I can I'm gonna turn this off. And then I'm gonna slowly turn this on and drizzle my water in here. We do have one question too. Um, oh yeah. Is there, does it matter what kind of apples you use? So I'm just using the apples that I had from the, from the trees on our property, but you would probably wanna use something a little bit on the more tart side because you're gonna be adding sugar. But if you don't have, just use whatever kind of apples you want. You just probably wouldn't wanna use like a traditional red apple because that's gonna to turn to mush and be a little bit too sweet. And then I'm sorry, I might've missed it, but did you say how much butter? One cup of butter. I'll link this recipe down below. Josh, actually, can you put the butter, or not the butter, the um, pie crust recipe? Yeah, I'll find it. Thank you. It it's flaky butter pie crust recipe or something like Perfect. that. Okay, so now I'm gonna turn the food processor on. And I'm gonna stop that. And sometimes it takes a little bit more water to get your pastry to come together, but you wanna use as little water as possible. So we start with half a cup, and then if we need to add one or two more tablespoons, we can do that, but we definitely wanna check our pastry first. Humidity can affect this. If you live in a really, really dry area, you might need to put a lot more water in. If you live in a humid area like Florida or Texas or something, you might not need as much water. So I'm actually gonna call that good, I think. It's okay if it feels dry, because we're gonna work it just a little bit on our silicone mat. Ooh. I spilled some water there, but that'll be okay. Okay, so now, so these are the secret ingredients for if you don't wanna go through the effort of cooking down your apples. So let's take a look at these and see how they're looking. So these were frozen apples, so they're releasing quite a bit of liquid. I might even pour some of that off, but we'll let these cook a little bit if you're using fresh apples, you would not get this much liquid off your apples. But we'll let those cook down for a little bit more while we come back to our pastry. And I'm just using all-purpose flour here. You don't need to use any special flour here. Is any of this time sensitive, like if I asked you questions? Oh, go for it. No, you're more than welcome to interrupt me. 
So someone was wondering what the purple um, plant bush out there was. That's a Japanese, Japanese... I think it's a Japanese maple yeah. or something. That was here when we bought our house and it's beautiful. And then do you have any plans to put any of the perennials that you're growing around the perimeter of the house? Yes, I do. So some of our perennials actually died over the winter. And so that's actually opened up some spaces for me to plant some of the perennials that I have started in the grow room. And I did at Costco pick up some peony, I don't know what they would be called. They're not bulbs, roots, root cuttings. And so I'm going to plant some of those this coming week. And my perennials are not quite mature enough yet to put outside, but I do plan to put most of the perennials I started out in my landscaping, not in my actual raised beds. I want those mostly for my annual flowers. So my pie crust is here. It's still pretty crumbly. I could add a little bit of water here if I want to, but I don't want to add too much because yesterday when I made pie crust, they were actually going to shape today. I think I added too much water. So I'm not kneading this. You don't want to knead this. I'm just pressing it together and that should condense this pie crust and get this flour hydrated enough to get it to all stick together. I do have my oven preheated to 400 degrees as well. Do you have any plans for an April um, garden tour? You know, I probably not April because April's coming up too close here, but May will for sure, probably the first thing of May, that probably be one of the first things I film because there's a lot of really crazy things happening out there already. I think I have six or seven beds completely planted out at this point. Okay, so what I'm doing is I'm just doing a little bit of lamination here while I was getting all of that flour worked in. You can see now I don't have very many crumbs left on my counter. And you can see we're starting to build layers in our crust. Regarding TikTok, TikTok. <laughs> uh, Becky does have an account technically. I do. It would be Acre Homestead, exactly Acre Homestead, yeah. not, not anything, no extra characters or XX or something. There are definitely a, a bunch of fake accounts. So Yeah, there's probably 20 or 30. Josh has gone in there a couple times and reported them. But maintaining TikTok is just not like, it's, it's hard. Just not a primary focus for sure. It's a whole nother beast. So here, this is actually enough crust to make two pie crusts. So your top and bottom pie crust. But we are going to be using this whole recipe to make our hand pies. So I'm just putting this kind of in the shape of a square. Certainly not perfect. I'm going to use my rolling pin to compress it one more time. I'm going to wrap it in plastic wrap. I'm going to pop this in the fridge and Josh is going to grab me the one that I made yesterday. And I'm going to hand this one to him because you want the butter to chill. We have worked this butter. This kitchen is pretty warm right now. And so the butter has actually warmed up quite a bit. And so we want to be working with cold pastry. And so it is best to let it chill for at least a half an hour up to a couple hours up to overnight like I did, or you can throw it in the freezer and pull it out of the freezer and always have pie crust ready for you to go, which is what I try to do. So, oh, I could show you right here. <laughs> so you can see how much liquid is in here. I'm just gonna let this continue to cook off. I was thinking maybe, maybe I will pour a little bit of that off because that's quite a bit. So, I think I could do that right here. I'll just do that. We'll taste these apples, so if we need to add a little bit more sugar to them, we can add more sugar back. You would not have this much liquid if you were working with fresh apples, but I'm working with what I have, so I've got a little extra liquid there. So I'm going to set that aside. I actually think I'm going to add just a little bit more back, and to that, I'm going to add just a couple tablespoons of 
flour since our apples are softened. So basically we're just making fresh, or we're making the apple pie filling and we're cooking them down because these are hand pies. They're not gonna be in the oven for hours and hours and hours. And so we want to kind of give the apples a jump start in the softening process. If we put raw apples into our pie crust, then we would take crunchy hard apples out of the oven. They wouldn't have time to cook. A couple of people have asked if you can add cornstarch to that yeah. to thicken it up. Yeah, you could use cornstarch instead of flour. I can see that I can add a little bit more of this liquid back because that flour has absorbed the liquid that's in there. So if I can get away with using this wonderful apple juice, I'm gonna go ahead and do that. For those of you asking about my baking endeavors, <laughs> um, there's definitely, uh, I guess, few and far between would be the way to put it. I haven't had uh, the inspiration to do anything recently, but there are some plans, but we'll, we'll definitely have a yeah. few more um, opportunities for me to do some, some baking. It's just, uh, yeah, not my primary focus. At this there's time. been some kind of busy, stuff yeah. Going on. So I'm actually gonna cut this in half and I'm gonna give this back to Josh and I'm gonna ask him to put that back in the fridge. And I'm only gonna work with half of the pastry at a time because like I said, my kitchen is pretty warm right now because I have my oven on, I have my stove on, there's some lights on and it's pretty warm in here. So Josh, when you have a second, could you put that in the fridge for me? Thank you. So you can make these hand pies whatever shape you want. I usually do square but I've seen definitely a lot of people make them in half rounds where you cut them in a round and then you fill it and then you fold it over. So you get a half moon. Okay, so there's flour in here now. So I need to keep a close eye on this because this could burn. I'm gonna go ahead and turn this off and I'm gonna put this in a different bowl so that it can cool down a little bit. before we put this into our pie. That's why I wanted to get this started first so that we could actually cool this just a bit before we put it into our pie crust because again, we wanna keep this pie crust as cold as possible. For those of you asking about the bees as well, I feel like I can answer that. I, we are still playing on bees. I have a couple of uh, emails out there and not a lot of updates to provide, but I do still plan on getting bees this year. Um, could you put that in the fridge for me, please? Thank you. So normally I would not put something that warm in my fridge, but we're on a time crunch and I want that to cool down a little bit. So we're just gonna help it along a little bit by putting that in the fridge. So now I'm just rolling my pastry out. You can roll it out with whatever kind of rolling pin you like. I like this rolling pin because this was my grandma's rolling pin. It was my dad's mom's rolling pin. I do have a French rolling pin, so one that doesn't have the, what would you call these? The uh, handles? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> one that's, this is a French rolling pin. If you're wondering what a French rolling pin is. It's like this. And I do use this sometimes. I'm just, I grabbed that one because that was my grandma's and I grew up using that style of rolling pin. So that's what I usually use. Okay, so I think with this first set of dough, I said that I made this yesterday, right? I made this dough yesterday. <laughs> I'm, I can't remember if I said that. So to prepare for today, I made this yesterday so that it would be chilled for me. I'm gonna use my pastry, no, my dough scraper, my bench scraper, and I'm gonna make these into little pie shapes. Let's see. You can make these as big or as little as you want. I think we're gonna do that size. So these first three, or four, I can count. We are gonna do the cheat method. I have some homemade apple butter that I made this fall with the apples off our property. And how I'm gonna fill this is I'm just gonna take some of this apple butter, and this is so good. This has lemon juice in it, 
sugar, apples, cinnamon, and it just cooked on the stove for I think like three or four hours and it thickened up. It doesn't have any thickener in it. That's just from time. So I filled this and now I'm gonna fold it over. You know what I should probably do? I usually, let's get a little bowl here. I usually take just a little bit of water and I run my finger around the edge. And this, when I fold it over, is gonna help it seal a little better. We have a quick question from Anna. Yeah. Uh, she uh, sent us $10, which is really nice. Wow, thank you. <clears throat> and she asks, do you ever stop and say, wow, this is my job? Yes, I do. Josh and I talk about that all the time. It is pretty incredible that I get to cook with you. And this is how I get to feed my family, is to hang out with you in the kitchen. It is pretty awesome. I say it, but I mean it. It means the world to me that you guys take time out of your day to spend time with you, that you take time out of your day to spend time with me because it allows me to do the things I love. Okay, so here, I'm gonna transfer this to my cookie sheet. We have our first hand pie. I wanna show you up close. So I folded it over and I crimped the edges and that is how easy it is to make a hand pie. So I'm gonna set this here. Would you recommend this same nope, uh, pie see. crust for savory yeah. hand pies? Yep. Same thing? Yep. Oh yeah, that would be good too. I, would, I wanna try making at some point, I've never done it. And I was thinking about doing it the last time I did freezer meals, but I couldn't quite wrap my head around it. I wanna try making individual chicken pot pies. And I think that would be fun, I just have never done that. And I would use this pie crust recipe. The sugar, like I said, that we've added into it is not for sweetness, it's for, what did I say it was for? <laughs> browning, <laughs> it's for browning. Okay, so I'm just gonna trim the edge just a little bit just for aesthetics, but you certainly don't have to do that. Oh, I forgot to put the water in this one, but that's okay. It'll come out just fine. You meant to do that. It's an experiment to see. Yes. We will mark it and we will see which one. Thank you, Josh. I appreciate that. You don't have to do the water. I usually do that out of an abundance of caution. Okay, so now we have two apple butter pies. We are going to make two strawberry pies. And how I'm gonna do that is use strawberry jam. And I'm just gonna take, you could use blueberry, rhubarb, whatever kind of jam you want. I've made these out of all different kinds of jam. This jam is pretty sweet, so I don't need a ton of it. And we're gonna experiment. <laughs> I guess we're doing lots of experiments today. We're gonna experiment making a flavored frosting or, or glaze to put on the top of this when it comes out of the oven. Okay. Is this the same recipe that you used for the paste, the pasties? Not no, pasties. the pasty crust is a hot water crust. So if you've ever watched the baking show, the British one, <laughs> I think they have it copyright so you can't say their name, but you all know the one I'm talking about. Um, they on there make all the time hot water crust or like pies that are raised and that's the kind of pie crust. So you actually use lard and boiling water. So you melt the fat in that. So it's, it's quite a bit different, but that is a very, very easy, I want some flour, pastry to work with because you don't have to worry about the butter melting because obviously you poured boiling water in it. And so it's just really easy to work with and it tastes really good too. And I think you can use shortening because I know some people have aversions to using lard. The lard adds a beautiful, beautiful flavor. But um, if you are opposed to that, I think you can use shortening in it. I've never tried, but I know that lard or shortening is a substitute for that. But I have an abundance of lard around here 
from when I purchase local hogs, I ask for the lard so that I'm using the whole hog and I render it and it tastes delicious and so that's what I use. Okay, we have four pies here and I am going to put an egg wash on the top of these. This is what's gonna give us our nice browned color. And as soon as our apples are cooled, they should be cool enough, we'll start rolling out our second pastry. So one recipe is gonna get you eight pies with the size I'm making, but you could make these smaller and you could get 16, or you could make them larger, but then they wouldn't really be a hand pie anymore. They would be pretty big. Oh, a really good filling for this, I have my pastry, there it is, my pastry brush out. A really good filling is peach. That's probably my favorite. Oh, I do have peach jam downstairs. I think I have one jar left. But to actually cook peaches on the stove, just like I cook those apples, that's my favorite. And these freeze beautifully. So if you wanted to make these and freeze them, you would freeze them before you put the egg wash on and you would bake them from frozen and they bake perfectly from frozen. Do you know of any alternate recipes that you could use if you couldn't have butter for the pie crust? There are, um, for this pie crust recipe, or just pie crust in general, there are recipes out there that use shortening, and I'm sure there are also recipes out there that use like a uh, vegan, like margarine or something like that. Okay, so I have two apple. I'm just gonna put little holes on the top for vent holes. And I'm gonna go ahead and get these in the oven because I might as well get these in the oven cooking because I don't want this butter to warm up again. Do you have any way of knowing which is which? Um, I think I will be able to tell because I was not the neatest. And so I'm just gonna get this out real quick. You all know I'm always taking <laughs> that cast iron out of the oven. Um, I think I'll be able to tell because I got a little on the outside. Okay, you wanna hand me the other um, pastry? Okay. I'm gonna wash my hands real quick. Nope, the one that's cut in half. Yeah. Thank you. I'm gonna do that same thing. So Josh, if you have other questions, I'm just gonna roll this pastry out just like I did the last one, but we're gonna use the apples. I guess um, I might as well address the elephant in the room. Um, we do get a lot of questions about our son. Oh yeah. And he's great. He's fantastic. He's, he's fantastic. We just uh, wanna respect his privacy because he can't yeah. say whether or not he wants to be on screen. Um, and all of you are wonderful and you're all so curious about how he's doing and what he's doing and he's developed, a, you know, as you'd expect, he's running around and jibber jabbering and, and all that stuff. But we just don't like to show him on screen because we've had um, some negative experiences with that in the past. And so here we are, we're, yeah. we're, we're learning from our mistakes of the past and we're, we're keeping him private. So, but thank you for asking and we appreciate that. Yeah, he's pretty awesome. We love having him around. He's, he definitely brings so much joy to our home and we're super, super grateful for him. So thank you for everybody who leaves kind comments and checks in on him. We do love him and we are super glad that he's part of our family. So I've got this one here. I'm almost done rolling it out. And Josh, would you be willing to get me the apples? Yes. So apple pie is one of Josh's favorite desserts. And I actually don't really like apple pie that much. Did I say that whole thing muted, by the way? I don't know. I guess not. Okay, thank you. Oh yeah, those are, they're still pretty warm, but they're not as hot as they were when I took them off the stove. Okay, so I'm gonna make four again. I'm just gonna cut these down and across. But I have seen, so I am again, I'm making these square, but I have seen people make really beautiful ones when they 
take a, a big round cookie cutter and then it becomes like a half moon shape. So I'm just gonna take our pie filling and I have more than enough than I need for these four, but I made, a, again, I made pie crust today so I can use this and later this evening or tomorrow I can make a few more pies and I'll probably freeze those ones. Are there any questions, Josh? Yeah, sorry, I've been um, typing a little bit. That's um, okay. Kind of random. Would you ever start a cameo? And do you know what a cameo is? I do. I don't. I don't think so. I can't imagine. Um. The last yeah. thing we need is people splicing together your random <laughs> <laughs> sentences. So if I was thinking, I probably should have just done one at a time because this pastry is going to warm up since this filling is hot. But we're just going to work with it. I need a little more water. One relevant question would be, uh, is our oven a convection oven or just a conventional? And it is technically convection, but I don't think you're running it. No, I just like have it. Right I just have it on just regular oven. It but is propane, so it's propane heat, not electric. Yeah, so the oven over here, so we have two ovens in our house because this oven here is propane and that oven is electric. We lose power here pretty regularly. And the previous owners of this house were wanting to be prepared. And so if we lose power, we can still use this oven and we can still use that stove. So it's kind of nice, but technically electric ovens do better at baking, but it's over there. So we're using this one. I'm just folding this over just like I did before. Pinching the ends down. Nothing new here. But sometimes it is harder to fold it over just because there is obviously more crust, or more filling, not more crust, there's more filling. Let's see, maybe we'll make this one square instead of rectangle. You could also not fold them, you could have smaller pieces and crimp all four sides if you wanted to do that instead. Someone is wondering if you were to make these with a jam, um, could you reheat them in the toaster like a Pop-Tart? I think so, I've never tried. I wouldn't do it if you noticed there was a, a leak in it because then it could probably leak into your just get some flour on this fork could leak into your toaster but I'm sure if there wasn't a leak you could certainly put it in a toaster I would I would try that we don't own a toaster so I've never tried it's been purged <laughs> <laughs> when we moved I purged our toaster and Josh brings it up very regularly <laughs> that I purged our toaster so we need to get a toaster but we've been using the air fryer since I got the air fryer like a toaster I made bagels this last week and oh my goodness, they heat up so well in the air fryer. I love the air fryer. So I can tell this pastry is warming up. So I wanna get this in the oven quickly. I should have let that filling cool quite a bit more before I filled these, pastry, or these pies. Get an, a wash on them quickly. Yeah, if you guys don't have an air fryer, I love my air fryer. We've been using it a lot. I haven't done any more like meals since we cooked all those meals together with you, but I use it all the time to heat things up and to reheat things. So that's been really nice. It gets things nice and crispy again. So I'm sure these in the air fryer would be delicious. Josh, tell them how yummy the croissant breakfast sandwiches turn out in the air fryer. Oh, so yummy. They're, it's yeah. like the, they're so crispy again. Like the croissant kind of gets revitalized back to exactly what you'd expect the croissant to be, even when frozen. So Even more crispy than when you like buy it at, because those were from Costco. Yeah. So good. So I'm going to wash my hands because they're covered in flour and butter. Also, I'm just curious. Uh, this is, a, I guess, more of a technical question but i'm seeing some things about ads showing up maybe too frequently we put it on conservative 
which I would hope is not every like three minutes like it was last live. Can those of you that are getting ads tell me how often you're receiving them? Yeah, we definitely don't want, I went and took a um, ton off last time because there was just- It was way, every three minutes. It was we, way too we much. We were stunned by that. Um, yeah, so thank you for letting us know because that was outrageous. I just put a delay in it for now so we can figure that out. So I'm just putting a few things, so thank you for your feedback on that. Um, our goal is to get a little bit better each time. <laughs> so I really enjoy doing these lives and I know that we've had a little hiccups here and there, each one, but hopefully we can improve as we go. So now I'm just cleaning up my mess and we're gonna make some glazes to go on the top because our pies are officially in the oven. Thanks everyone for the feedback on the ads. It seems like it's, people are receiving like one so far. So that's, oh, okay. that's reasonable. There is, we have to have some to some degree so that we, you know, make, you know, a little bit back on this, but definitely not every three minutes and one to two seems appropriate probably. I will go back at the end of this and double check to see how many YouTube put and so I can adjust it. Sometimes it really crams them in there. It does. And YouTube does like automatically does it. And so I have to go back and sometimes I don't have control over it. YouTube takes control. So I appreciate the feedback on that because then I can do what I can do on my end. So I have two little bowls of powdered sugar here and we're going to make a glaze. I've never made a glaze for these before, but I thought it'd be fun to try. So we're gonna make a strawberry glaze. It's gonna be a little pink. And the way I'm gonna get it pink is by adding, I probably have three quarters of a cup of powdered sugar in there and probably two tablespoons of jam. And I'm gonna do the same thing with this one. And now I'm just gonna get some water. You could use cream, you could use Oh, goodness. You could use, <laughs> looking at all these <laughs> containers, you could use milk. I'm just using water today, but you can use whatever you want. So now when there's a chance that you didn't um, put vent holes in the apple. In oh, did I forget them? My goal maybe is, that's, that's what I I'm think seeing. you're right. I think we're gonna do that right now. I didn't. You're, Good catch. Yeah. Thank you. I didn't see who said that, but I, we appreciate, appreciate that. Thank you. And appreciate it. <laughs> Would you ever raise quail? I don't think so. I think they're cute. But, you know, Josh and I don't, we're, we don't think we ever want to butcher anything on our homestead. And so I don't think the quail eggs would be worth the effort for us. And so I don't think, I don't think so. They're cute though. I really want turkeys. I don't know if I've told you that, <laughs> but I kind of want them more as pets because one of my neighbors has turkeys and I think they're so fun. And Josh is not interested in turkeys. <laughs> I think the chickens we have are a great balance. Yeah. For now. Yeah. Well, and we, we don't have a coop or something for turkeys. And so that's, that's, it's totally valid why we shouldn't get turkeys, but the turkeys my neighbor has, they're white and they're beautiful. <laughs> I think they may be meat birds though. I think they are. And I don't know if I have, I just can't do it. I can't raise something from a chick or whatever the turkey version of that is and then, and then butcher them. I just can't do it, I don't Yeah. Think. So look how beautiful these are. I should probably taste them, but just that little bit, I'm gonna come around to show you up close together so you can see the different color. So we have our apple butter glaze and our strawberry glaze. That worked out beautiful. I was thinking before I thought of this idea that it would be fun to use freeze dried fruit powder, like strawberry fruit powder. I don't have any of that right now. And so then I thought of this idea. Ooh, that has surprisingly a lot of strawberry flavor. Let's try this one. That's really, really good too. So now we just wait for our hand pies to come out of the oven. They're gonna take probably 15 to 20 minutes or so to bake. So while they're baking, we can chat. Okay, I do have some questions that aren't pertaining 
yeah. to cooking. So we might as well do those. Um, so have you had a chance to do research on the orchard? And then what changes are you planning for the orchard? And do you have any plans to, to deter pests? You know, I have not had much time to research the orchard, even at my last property. I just kind of let it do whatever it was going to do. This year, we did have some help come out and do a little bit of pruning on the trees because I just didn't have time to get out there. And so we had some help pruning the trees, but I have not done any research on pest management, like spraying. I know there's an organic spray that you're supposed to spray before they blossom. I think, I don't know. I have not done hardly any research on that. I kind of just let them do their thing and then it's pretty exciting when we get a harvest. A lot of times there is some like bug damage on them and that's why I end up turning a lot of it into sliced apples for the freezer or applesauce or apple butter because once they have damage, you can still eat the apple, you just need to cut that part away, but they're not gonna last very long. So you need to turn them into something or freeze them. So fr frozen, Sliced is probably one of our favorites because I can put that in breads and muffins and oatmeal and all sorts of things. Make pie out of it. So a little detour here, and this is going to seem like a placed ad or something, but Amber DeMuth um, asks if you have any thoughts or of putting together a freezer meal guide or cookbook. <laughs> well, I did just come out with my first one. So if you missed it, it was the breakfast freezer meal video I did. Josh could put a link in the description box for the freezer meal packet. And what it does is it walks you through step by step by step how to shop, cook, prep, and assemble 12 um, croissant sandwiches. 12, these are all breakfast items. 12 English muffins, <laughs> 12 breakfast burritos, Yes. and one to two Amish casseroles. Depending on how you dish it up. And it gives you the shopping list and basically it walks you through, it's a recipe on how to bulk cook. So it tells you what to cook first and then what to cook next so that you end up with all your ingredients and then all you have to do is assemble them. Now, all of those recipes can be found on the website. So if you don't want the actual guide, you can get the recipes on the website. And I have a video showing you how to do it. So you could just watch the video and you know make your own grocery list and stuff, but if you want, someone who did all the thinking for you. Oh, it also has the reheat instructions. So that is down. Oh, I can show you what it looks like. Any other questions though, while I grab this? Well, this one's about your skin. Yeah. <laughs> um, Nina Johnson donated and asked. Um, oh, thank you. She says, Becky, your skin is so beautiful. What do you use as a beauty regimen? Regimen? Regiment? Re re regime. Regime? Regime. Regime. It says regime, but I think regimen. I think routine? Routine. I don't know. Well, I am very simple when it comes to that. I use, oh yeah, we've got a little bit of leaking, so I'm gonna know which ones are which. I use just soap to wash my face, and then I use drugstore concealer and powder around my eyes and mascara and chapstick, and that's about it. Would you ever put um, up a tutorial on how you put your hair up? I have one on Instagram. Oh. Um, I did a live on Instagram. Oh yeah, we got a little bit of spillage. Only one of them though. I said that's pretty good odds, one out of eight. Um, oh, so this is the one of the, this is what we had for breakfast this morning. These are the egg McMuffin sandwiches. I don't think I can say McMuffin. These are the English muffin breakfast sandwiches. We'll cut that out in post. <laughs> and then here is the reheat. I put the date on when I made them and it has the reheat instructions. And so that's what it looks like. There's only one left because we've been going through them and I actually made half of them for my sister because she just had her third baby. And I didn't tell you, Josh, but I ran into them on the way home today. Cool. Yeah, so I got to see my little nephew. He's only a week and a half old today. Um, sorry, another detour. A lot that's of these okay. are a little random. That's or at okay. least they're hard to piece together. That's uh, okay. We have all the time in the world. Um, so if you could well, have a celebrity chef over for dinner, who would it oh. be? And what would you serve them? Oh, I would do the cooking? Yeah. Oh. Maybe oh. answer it both ways. <laughs> who would you like to have cook for you? And then who would you cook for? Oh gosh. My probably all time like favorite uh, chef is Ina Garten. 
or I always say her name wrong, but she, you know what, Barefoot Contessa, she's my favorite. I love the way she cooks, I love her simple style. It was all about, it still is, I think she still has shows. Um, I watch her on YouTube though, but it's all about like the best quality ingredients you can afford and use. She always made her own broth from scratch, that's why I started making my own broth. She just wants high quality, simple ingredients and lets them shine. And I always love, loved watching her. She and Rachel Ray, of course. Um, but I just loved Barefoot Contessa. Like her whole, like her kitchen was always beautiful to me. <laughs> she always had those like white canisters with the flour and she would go to like the cheese market and stuff like that. And I always thought that was so fun. So I don't, I don't know if I'd want to cook for her though. I don't know if I'd want to cook for <laughs> any of them. I'd be pretty nervous, I think. Yeah, that'd be a bit nerve wracking. Yeah. Yeah. Um, on the topic of cooking, what type of cookware do you use? Um, I use... It's a hodgepodge, really. It's a, yeah, so a lot of my cookware has been gifts um, to me from family. And I do like quality cookware. I think it makes a big difference. And that's one thing watching these chefs on the Food Network and stuff growing up. They always used quality cookware. And so I didn't start out with all the cookware that I have. I definitely have slowly accumulated it. But I do like just traditional lodge cast iron. That's not super expensive. But I have um, a Le Creuset pot and brazier, enameled cast iron, and that was gifts from Josh. Josh is dad, gifted me some all clad, which is what I used for the apple. And then I just got some new maiden cookware that just came in the mail. And so I'm excited to use that. And what else do I have? I have, oh, what's the cast iron, the Portland company? Ooh. Finex. Finex, yeah. Yeah, that's a really nice cast iron. I haven't used that in a while because I need to re-season it. <laughs> and yeah, I think that's mostly what I use. Nothing, no, you're not picky necessarily. No, but the stuff that I have is quality. And the cool thing is I like that I think about the person who gifted me, like my rolling pin is my grandma's. Josh got me my nice cookware. He also got me my pasta roller. My mom got me my KitchenAid mixer. And so it's kind of fun that the like more investment pieces that are supposed to last you a long time were gifts I didn't buy myself. So I can kind of think about that person when I'm using that piece of equipment. So I kind of like that. Stacy Stitches asks, have you ever made homemade butter? She just I, made some last Saturday and it was so fun. I have made homemade butter, but it's probably been I made it when, you? yeah, I made it at our first house together. Oh, okay. I've got some raw local cream and I made it and it was delicious, but it is expensive to make it <laughs> yourself if you buy uh, raw cream. And so that's why I haven't really made it much since, but that'd be kind of fun to do like a, a dinner party or something and like make the butter and make some fancy like compound butters or something like that. That would be kind of fun. I should do that. Um, uh, kind of random, I guess. How many freezers do you actually have? We have three freezers. Did you have to think about it? Josh well, is we like, have three techni technically. We have three freezers. Two chest freezers and a stand-up freezer. But then we have like two like our free fridge freezers. Yeah, like our fridge. I don't count that as like our freezer. but So I buy all my beef almost, probably 95% from a local farm. And so I usually buy half a cow at a time. And that takes up one entire chest freezer because I do like to have a little bit of space in there so that it doesn't get overwhelming to get into the chest freezer and find the thing. So I like to have a little extra space. And then I have another chest freezer that's mostly pork that I buy from a local farmer and chicken. If I find chicken on sale, I like to buy it in bulk if possible. And, um, and then my freezer in my garage, my stand-up freezer is mostly for my freezer meal. So I'm trying to get better and my produce from the garden so I'm trying to get better about kind of keeping them separate so that they stay nice and organized. But that took us years to get <laughs> to get to that point. We bought our first chest freezer, I think the first year we got married. That was pretty quick. Yeah, and that was because I bought a quarter of a cow and a quarter of a cow is not gonna fit in your, I guess it probably, no, I don't think it would. You certainly wouldn't be able to put anything else in your freezer if you put it in your kitchen freezer. 
I'm just rotating these so they cook evenly. The apple ones with the apple look perfect. My, jam, my strawberry jam one, I did have some, quite a bit of leaking out of one of them, but they're looking really, really good. The first ones are almost done. Okay, some other questions here. Well, someone um, donated asked about my baking journey again. Oh. <laughs> um, I, I, it's a little bit stalled. I haven't done anything since the cake. Yeah. But I, I still, um, I, I enjoy making cookies from time to time, like chocolate yeah. cookies. But I haven't had anything that I've thought, oh, I should film this for Becky Yeah. yet. We are, um, our furnace broke. <laughs> and so Josh has been working on, that's kind of been a big thing is trying to figure out, getting bids and stuff like that to either fix the furnace or replace it, it's old. And so that's a whole, has nothing to do with cooking or gardening, but that's just one of the things that's kind of, oh, I wanted to mention, <laughs> we decided, I keep getting questions about the seed room. We're not gonna put any new flooring in there. We finally got the word, we got um, the money back that we had paid for the flooring. And so we're just gonna leave it concrete and not worry about it. So I'm really happy with that. I think that's fine. I'm glad the carpet's gone and we got some paint on the walls and we're just gonna leave it for now. And then who knows what that room is gonna be in the future, so. Yeah. Yeah. So it's kind of nice that that is officially like all said and done. We know we're just gonna leave it the way it is. Um, what is your favorite food to cook? I don't know. It changes all the time. Um, I like cooking easy things at night when I'm in the kitchen by myself and the house is quiet. Like we have quesadillas for dinner a lot and I like having, probably tacos. I'd say probably tacos because that's probably our favorite food to eat. You've been making um, quesadillas. Yeah, I'm in a quesadilla phase right now um, because they're easy and delicious. We... I opened my last jar of my corn relish because I like to put that on my quesadillas. Oh, and no. so, did you not know that? I didn't yeah, that, know it was gone. Well, it's not gone. It's just one last almost one. gone. Um, I like making new things. That's why we make new stuff all the time together because I like making new things. Um, I wouldn't say I necessarily have like a favorite, but to eat probably tacos over the weekend, you can see they're really beautiful. We just got a little bit of um, jam oozing out. Over last weekend, Josh and my son were napping at the same time. So I had the whole kitchen to myself and it was-, it was a, You're exposing me like that? No, it's good. You had a, no, it was Saturday. Okay, good. We had gone out as a family with Josh's family. We went to OMSI. It's a fun like museum in Portland. And it was a busy day and they took naps. And I had the kitchen to myself and I made homemade tortillas and I pulled out the jalapeno, the pineapple jalapeno chicken that we had made in last freezer cooking day, grilled that up, made some corn, pulled some corn out of the freezer, made, it's called crack corn, I think on the website, delicious corn. We had great tacos and it was wonderful. It was just quiet, me in the kitchen and it was fun. Okay, I need a spatula. Have you considered using the lemon curd that you made for one of these hand pies? I have not. That is a fantastic idea. We've had a few people recommend that. We've been using the lemon curd. The, the best way so far that we've been using it is in Greek yogurt. So good. So good. So I'm just taking these off the cookie sheet because if I leave them on here, I worry that the heat from cookie sheet will steam and kind of make the bottoms soft. That has jam all over it now. I'm gonna grab a different one. And I'm gonna get these on a cooling rack. I wanna make donuts again, and I wanna put the lemon curd in donuts with making some Bavarian cream. I've been looking at recipes for that. Sorry if that's loud. And there are our... They're gonna fall. Oh. <laughs> so I think what I'm going to do, because this glaze is going to run off because this pastry is obviously very, very hot. So I should have marked which ones are which. So obviously this one's, 
I think these two are strawberry. And I think these two are apple. So maybe I'll, well, yeah, I think that's right. I could be wrong though. So we're gonna go ahead and glaze these. You can ask questions, Josh, if there's questions. Sure, um, would you ever consider putting together a list of the products and equipment that you would recommend for a beginner gardener and a green stock gardener? I have, um, I can do that. I've talked about doing that. I have in the description box my favorite of my garden videos, my favorite gardening equipment. But I've talked about doing like a blog post or something like that, if that would be helpful. Um, that's a good idea. I should do that. I've been talking about it, so I will put that higher up on the priority list. And this might break the fourth wall a little bit, or maybe it's third wall. I think it's fourth wall. It's fourth wall. Um, do you have any advice for a new cooking YouTube creator? Yeah, I would say be yourself because there's nobody else you can be. And so if you're going to make, if you're going to do it for a while, it's hard to keep a front up if you're, you know, trying to be perfect or something. So just be you and have fun. And if you want to turn it into a career, I would recommend taking it seriously and treating it like a job. And have fun because it is fun. And when I started, I just used my iPhone. I had an iPhone 7 at the time. I didn't have any microphone. I didn't have any fancy camera. I used Josh's old, I don't know, how old was that computer? Oh, it was like a... 2011 <laughs> MacBook Pro. Yeah, and... Had to be plugged in to run. You couldn't... Yeah. <laughs> you had no battery left. I actually started editing on my phone, probably the first, like, 10 videos, because I was overwhelmed to try to figure out how to transfer the... And Josh was in school at the time. Josh was getting his bachelor's degree. He was back in school. I decided to start YouTube. <laughs> and so he was able to help me a lot, but... I just started on my phone. I did probably 10 videos and then I used his computer and it was just like a slow process of just trying to get a little better each time. Just like with these lives, we're just trying to get a little bit better each time. That's another thing. It's not gonna be perfect when you start and the only way you're gonna get better is to practice. So just hit record and start practicing and have fun with it. Okay, so here are our pies. I'm just gonna put this plate here so you can see better, better contrast. Okay. Ooh, that's not gonna work. I'm stressing Josh out. Okay, so these are our strawberry. These are our apple. They need to cool a little bit before we can eat them or we will scald the roof of our mouth is off and that's no fun. Burning your mouth is never, never fun. We've had a couple people ask about the... They're almost done. The white casserole dishes that you've used recently? Oh, yeah. Is, it, are they, is there a brand or are they just... I don't think so. They, they're just from my local Kroger store. They're nothing fancy, I don't think, but I really love them. And yeah, they're nothing fancy. But I like the... I like them. I like that they have handles a lot. I didn't realize how nice that would be until I started using them and they're fantastic. Yeah. I could maybe see if I could find something to link to, but I just, they're not, they're not expensive. I think they were $13 each or something like that. Um, okay. On to the greenhouse topic. Yeah. Uh, when you get a greenhouse, do you think you'll be heating it so you can grow stuff year round or how do you plan to use it? That's not something we've really talked about a ton. We have electric down there. Um, the way that I plan to use it mostly is for like seed starting and extending my season, but not necessarily, I don't think, trying to grow. I, I don't know, that's a good question. I do wanna use it because I think that if I had a greenhouse and I started lettuce and spinach and some of those types of things, or broccoli or cabbage, if I started them in the fall, 
I could get them to grow. They probably wouldn't grow during the winter because there wouldn't be enough daylight hours because things to grow need a certain amount of daylight hours. But I could get them to grow and then they would probably stop growing. But if I had enough out there, then I could go out and harvest throughout the winter. That's kind of what I want to do. But we haven't really talked about heating it yet. We did put power down there when they were doing all the trenching, just in case though. Unrelated, um, but would you ever grow grapes? That's on our plan. We, um, we have the space for it, yeah. possibly. We want to. We were at, it was actually in the original plan when we were first doing the garden to put like a, not a vineyard, but a pretty good size grape, vin not Maybe, vineyard, because it's small. I think a vineyard is being huge, but. I mean, it'd be a yard with vines in it. Yeah, so whatever you'd call that. We, but that was one thing we kind of paired back and we were like, let's, let's just focus, woo, sorry. That was loud. I'm gonna turn the oven off because we don't need it any warmer in here. Do you want these apple ones glazed too, Josh, or just the apple butter ones? I mean, you I want it's hard to go wrong with glazing. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Okay, we'll glaze them. These are so beautiful. Let me show you again. So the glaze is like soaking into the pastry, which looks really awesome. But this is what they look like not glazed. And they cook up just like this if you cook them from frozen. They cook up perfect from, from frozen. We have a question from Pam Albert who asks, uh, if you, I guess she's wondering why you don't grow parsnips. Um, think, didn't we grow them the first year? I did, which I didn't take you guys along for that year. We don't really eat parsnips, so I think that's why I haven't. They were kind of good. They were, those were like the peppery kind of. Yeah, they're like a white root crop. They're the ones that are pointy, right? Because there's turnips, which are round, and parsnips. I think they're white and. They look like a large carrot. Yeah. You know, I, just because we don't eat them a lot, so I just haven't really thought about them. I do have seed, parsnip seed but it's probably not good anymore because it would have been from 2020. Do you plan to grow turnips and rutabagas? Rutabagas, that's what I was thinking. Um, I don't have plans to. I've, I'm, trying, I'm trying to get better at just growing things that I know will eat because the first year I had a garden, I grew so many things that like, I had like a whole, half a bed of beets. Joshua, I don't like beets. <laughs> I had, well, I thought it was lettuce that I was planting and those beds were 16 by four feet and I probably had four feet, I probably had an eight foot square thing of radishes. I thought it was lettuce, but, so the first year I gardened, I really realized that I should focus on trying to grow things we like. And so that's why I haven't really grown things that we don't eat a lot of. I do plan to try to grow, I've got some edamame, so soybeans, we like that steamed, so I'm gonna to attempt to grow that this year. My peanuts look fantastic. You all, I don't think have seen me plant those yet, but those things grow very, very quickly. I think they took like two days to germinate or something. It was crazy. It's literally like a peanut you put in the ground and it grows. You have this other camera over here too. That... Oh, that's true, I forgot about it. So those are, which one do you wanna try first? I think the apple, what would you call that? The, the apple pie looking one? The actual pie looking, the, the... No, the apple pie, the... The one with the apple butter? I'm gonna be honest, I was watching a lot of <laughs> chat, but you had cut up apples. Yeah, yeah, right? yeah, the apple pie. Apple one. pie, yeah. Yeah. Okay, so should we cut one? Oh, so is that one still on? I think it should work. Is it working? I don't think I so. I think so, you could try. Okay, I'll try. If, no, no, it's not. It's okay. definitely not. It's, it looks like it's it, frozen. it went to sleep. Yep, that's... Uh. I think... That's okay. I can just cut it and bring it. It worked when we needed it to. Okay, these that's are going to be super hot. Baby, I'm going to cut into each one. And then I will show you what each one looks like. 
I might have missed it, hun, but is there a, maybe in a recent video or maybe a past video, you used a pan to cook brisket? Does that sound familiar? Yes. Someone's wondering if that pan got clean or if it was possible it did, to clean actually. it. actually. It did. Yeah, I definitely, that brisket was, it cooked for another, I think, I think I took it out of the oven at like 10 o'clock at night. It cooked for another five hours or something. And it was, oh yeah, look at that. Okay. So let me cut a couple. Now this is going to be, this one you can really see the flakes because the, okay. Do you see all those flakes? This is the apple butter one. And this is the apple pie one. And look at that crust. I guess this one didn't get quite as dark, but those look great. Okay. So Josh, these ones are going to be for you. And then I'm going to cut Sweet. the strawberry one. Strawberry is going to be my favorite. She cut one up for Troy too. I bet he didn't consider that perk. Oh yeah. That's what perk. <laughs> Troy, what kind do you want? Uh, Apple or strawberry? I would be down for strawberry. Strawberry? That's all right. Yep. Okay. Here's a whole plate for them. <laughs> so Josh, well you guys can yeah, That's sticky on the bottom because my hands were sticky. So I'm going to wash my hands again. Are your fingers good now, Troy? <laughs> um, I'll, I'll wait until He's going to refrain from touching anything. Oh. <laughs> yeah, I'll, I'll wait until we're done. I don't want to do anything all sticky. Goobery, yeah. You can bring some home with you. There we go. Could you um, pass over some forks? Yes. Oh, yeah, that would work. That would be helpful. I've used all... Oh, this is the strawberry one. What? We're good. We're good. You came unplugged for a moment. Oh! No, we're good. Okay. This is strawberry. Oh, yeah. Here you can really see the flakes. Okay. I think Apparently, we froze for a second. Well, actually, more oh. realistically, we came unplugged at some point, but I think Just, we're back now. Yeah, Are we back? How long was it unplugged for? Just Not even a... It was Not just a blip. Like two seconds. Oops. Well, I can tell you this is delicious. Sorry, I was focused on. It's okay. I'm eating the strawberry one. Why are you laughing? The fork. <laughs> <laughs> oh my goodness. That is so good. I'm going to try the apple pie. When I was pregnant, the only thing that I ate, or I didn't even crave it, but that I was like, oh, that sounds really good, that normally wouldn't sound good to me, was apple pie. So Josh benefited a lot during that time, because I made apple pie like three times, which I think those were the only three times I made apple pie. Yeah, that was really good right there. Someone said um, they've requested a few times oh. to add a pinch of salt to the top. Mm. They said we won't regret it. I, I'm inclined to believe them. Especially on the strawberry one because it's sweeter. Where'd my salt go? Oh, here it is. Okay. You all are geniuses. Do you want some too? Here's the salt for you guys. Sure, yeah. Okay, let's try that. Mm. Oh yeah, that was a good recommendation. Mm -hmm. That's so Thanks. good. Thanks. Good idea. I always put salt in my baked goods because you just really want that balance of sweet and salty. And that is how you make homemade pies. <laughs> it is that easy. My kitchen might be <laughs> a mess, but it's worth it. Having delicious homemade pies.
And these do, they're not gonna be as crunchy. So that's why it'd be fun to try putting those in the air fryer tomorrow to see how they warm up. I would say they only last for, I mean, they're not gonna spoil on you, but for the most benefit of the flavor, you wanna eat them within a day or two. That's why I like freezing them because then you can bake just a couple off fresh and you don't you know, have to make a whole recipe and then need to eat a whole recipe. So, yeah. Sweet, thanks for making those, I'm excited. You're welcome. So I wanna thank every single one of you for taking time out of your day to spend time with me in the kitchen. I hope you enjoyed this. We are working on just getting a little better each time and so hopefully that came across today. And thank you for your input so that we can get better each time. If you want the pie crust recipe, I can link that down below. And then I looked at maybe three or four different hand pie recipes online. So I'll put some of those down below. I didn't follow any of them. I just used them as kind of a guideline for what I did today. And I want to thank you again for being here. Thank you for being you. And I can't wait to see you next time. Bye, friend.